God save the king! Because who else will, right? <laughs> um, so but what's interesting uh, is I didn't really mean to watch the coronation. Um, I, 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 I think we talked about um, when Elizabeth died and we sort, I sort of pointed myself around it and I kind of saw clips on online and stuff like that. I think I was sad. I mean, it was, it was a big deal seeing her coffin go down into the crypt and, and things like that. And I, I just didn't want to do that. But, you know, there was enough interest around in the internet and, and Milo was, well, okay, Milo, right? <laughs> he was sort of saying, I'm, you're not going to spoil this for me, my chat, which he kicked me out of some time ago anyway. So who knows? It wasn't me that was going to be spoiling the, the coronation for him. But I realized he had a point. That, that we needed to watch, we needed to be there. And I mean, the, everything's, everybody's always wanted to be making history, right? Well, this is actually making history in that sort of pure ritual sense of it's an event. Yeah. So you guys are going to be happy to hear this. I woke up properly on May 6th, even a bit early, although I think, I think not early enough indeed to see the full procession for wherever they started. I don't know. But when I got, when I turned on the live stream and figured out how to get in, uh, they were already walking into the Abbey and it was clearly the, 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 you know, the beginning of the procession or maybe actually maybe Charles and um, the, his party were getting out of their um, vehicles. Now I, I can't, I can't remember. Anyway, I sort of dropped in in the middle and I was hours and hours and hours later delighted that I had watched. Um, and of course, at some point I started taking screenshots and therefore we are going to share with you our impressions of the coronation of King Charles III in detail with images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. God save the King. Welcome to the Mosaic Ark. excited to have a king are you excited i i hear down down under you guys aren't even sure you want him on your money well no <laughs> <laughs> well we've had we've had the queen on the money and we've had the birthday public holiday for so long mm. so now everything's just to have the king on it and apparently a bunch of people are saying that they want steve Irwin on the money instead of king charles <laughs> Which one is Steve Irwin, the crocodile guy? Is he? He's a crocodile oh, hunter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's the he's the guy that used to run around jumping on crocodiles and handling snakes and everything. And, and they'd rather have him so, than the king. Yep. Yeah. Well, we yeah. don't have a king on our yeah. money, so I mean, you know, it's do we? I'm pretty sure we don't. No, I don't think you do. We have a George on our money, but mm. it's not it's not King George. <laughs> not the George. Not, not yes which george is that well i'm still i mean i i, I maybe i was in the the coronation mood because i did you know watch bridger uh, both both seasons of bridgerton so at least i'm you know full of images of queen charlotte and her wigs and <laughs> and and you've been go, oh i was gonna say you've been immersed in it before <laughs> sort of I mean, we, we, we've talked, you know, over this last nearly a year now, we'll have to have an anniversary party for ourselves, birthday of the Mosaic Ark sometime yeah. in August, um, that, you know, we've been talking about how everything's sort of court culture 
by now that that we are all in this sort of precious moment where if you say the wrong thing to the wrong person in the in the in the wrong venue you know it's like you're you're banished you're banished no 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 more society yeah. for you right <laughs> <laughs> no no more society no more breathing without physical respect it's really really strange kind of court that we're living in now mm. i i was ha i was happy about the monarchist uh but you're gonna have to convince me to be a monarchist i'm not sure i am yet <laughs> yeah. so so we'll, we'll do it right we will we'll, 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 we'll you'll talk me through the the the, the pageantry i'll do my best yeah yeah I'll, I'll give you the i'll give you the elevator pitch for why we need to, <laughs> why we need monarchies um, well the, the stream pitch but, is two hours long give me the elevator pitch now right why do we need it now <laughs> <laughs> if we're gonna um, if we're gonna have pe if we're gonna keep people listening for the the whole the whole stream tonight, we need to have some reason to k keep them in here. I think everyone needs a socially agreed uh, a, a socially agreed upon muse. Love muse and hate muse sort of just keeps everything concentrated. <laughs> but why a king? Why do we need a monarch for that? I mean, mm -hmm. isn't isn't any just any old celebrity? I mean, Steve Irwin and his crocodiles isn't that enough? I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can bail you out here and just go Tocqueville and say, without without aristocracy and therefore likely without monarchy, you have no great art. Can we get? All right, we, we can go. Do we, we want to start? With that do we want to sure. start with that? <laughs> <laughs> I got my my hair is all weird tonight. I I, I I'm, 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 I'm feeling I'm feeling nervous. I don't have my court on. Right. We need our we need our Queen Charlotte wigs on. I really yeah. Big big Georgian hair. Yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and you know, I don't and know what you're posh and for that. But that's so. Tocqueville is making that argument um, in Democracy in America, which I do recommend everybody should read because Tocqueville, like as everyone always loves to say, predicted everything. And mm -hmm. the thing he predicted about art was with with aristocracy, you have fine art, right? Because you have really wealthy patrons who want beautiful stuff. Although right now, I guess you, our aristocracy tends to buy kind of weird art. But anyway, that, mm -hmm. that with democracy, what you end up with is, 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 um, you know, the art that everybody, you know, the, 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 the vulgar art, right? The, the common art, the things that the, the crowd loves, which means that you do not get, um, you know, incredibly exquisite, finely crafted, oh, poems. Did, did we mention we're having a Kickstarter? Um, <laughs> In incredibly <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> gonna hear time. about it a lot for the rest of the month because it's launching on monday um mm -hmm. that with without that kind of of you know taste for the exquisite you just don't get well for example the the kinds of pageantry we're going to be seeing um in the in the in the coronation but also everything mm -hmm. i think that surrounds it right the 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 um jewelry the ornaments the engraving decorations the clothing the none none of that you if you don't have occasion for it it does not exist now maybe the met gala mm -hmm. gives us something but yeah but there's no there's no transcendentals in the met gala mm. they're not they're not aiming for a, a higher ideal it's 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 purely um materialistic art art form so uh it, it's interesting that you're mentioning the the royalty and the and the taste because you know like uh I, I'm, I'm constantly referencing the ethiopian imperial government because it's a monarchy because it's all one of one of the oldest monarchies on planet earth but it was specifically uh solomon monarchy and the the emperor of Ethiopia said once a long time ago that we have to be creating art that isn't purely material. And it never really made sense to me because being in an Australian context, our art is really, uh, it's, it's always been based on, at least in terms of painting and things like this, based on the landscapes. The landscapes in Australia are wild. They're uncultivated. It's not like a European situation where you have um, these 
aristocratic gardens and things like this. So uh, it's kind yes, of an interesting, yes, interesting yeah. thing to think about what it meant to have a purely materialistic art in Australia. Uh, that means looking at the natural world and uh, while we might represent it very beautifully in our art, we're not um, seeing the transcendental in the representation. Mm. And that's because we've been divorced from the the old world and the, the root of the, the civilization that exists down here. Because we don't have this desire for a spiritual artistic output, it's just continuous degradation now until we're really... Uh, we're aiming at the lowest uh, possible target that we can get because we don't see any uh, see anything higher. So mm. yeah, Steve Irwin becomes the right. It might be the crocodile wrestler. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. The um the icon of our society uh, is not Saint George. It's it's another uh it's another dragon slayer but it's divorced from <laughs> the christian so yeah i just think that's really like pretty much the problem <laughs> well, that's kind of powerful though it yeah. means a crocodile wrestler or alligator wrestler which is it yeah um that he is a dragon slayer of sorts he yeah. is he but is. It, but it's a democratized dragon slayer of sorts he's not doing it for any reason except for the lulls ah yeah well so you know? it's yeah, what i was i was thinking when you started talking there's the met gala stuff is all ironic right it's it's yes it's yes. In, it's incredibly expensive and it's great designers and you know they they make impossibly difficult to craft dresses and and suits and things but it's all ironic it, it, mm. you know, it it's it's for the cameras when they they show off on the steps and it's yeah, I, I mean, it's some of the some of the dresses and stuff. I mean, some of them are very beautiful, and and the women are, you know, shapely inside them. And sometimes you see a lot of them inside them. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but the, but but always, you know, it's always on the edge of a joke, right? And and that's that's mm. interesting what Bridgerton is doing because the set design and the costumes for that is is a little bit ironic too, right? That's like it's it's like bright colors and it's mm. it's sort of you know the court um ceremonial and the food and, and things like that but there's when you're talking about the sacred and the transcendent obviously in bridgerton there is none except for the the sex right so it's 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 you know mm -hmm. art pornography um but it's this is of course appropriate contrast with what we saw what i started realizing i was seeing in the coronation and therefore realizing that milo was right that there was something else going on with this because it was mm -hmm. it, it i mean it, it everyone wanted it to go straight to irony but it never really did it it, it did feel like it was a uh i mean maybe not just you know the last one well who how, how long charles will live but you know, nobody had seen this for 70 years and it may be the last one of this sort that we see in our lifetime. Probably not. It's, it's hopefully we outlive Charles, but, um, that mm. it's, it's hard to say whether we'll ever see anything quite like it ever again at the level of ceremony and seriousness that the, um, the, 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 uh, capital put on. Mm. Um, yeah, well, the the culture's been attenuated to Met Gala irony, the uh, the pageantry of of monarchy, mm -hmm. and it's sad. <laughs> I mean, without getting melancholic about it, it's quite sad. The um, irony. I think this reliance on irony is because everybody has a, a deficit of idealism. Mm -hmm. They don't actually believe in an ideal anymore. They don't even know what the ideal is. You know, it's like drag queens are, are an ironic mockery of what a woman is because people have lost the sense of the ideal of the feminine. And it's the same with the masculine. The ideal of the masculine is the king. And the culture has no ideal masculinity anymore because it's been so degenerated by 
Protestantism, the 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 denial of the necessity for patriarchy and everything else that followed. So all the culture is able to do now is make a, a B grade re reproduction of something which really points to the uh, the ancient majesty of uh, masculinity that, that mankind has always um, seen as the, as the ideal. And um, it was really lovely to see it, even though, you know, we have our issues with the English <laughs> monarchy <laughs> which, here. Which we on the Mosaic I, Arc have considered. Right? Mm -hmm, many <laughs> I, times. I, I, I certainly hope anybody <laughs> watching us the first time goes back and watches some of yeah. our other ones. We're, We've we've discussed Anglo yeah. nationalism and, and and Elizabeth and and some you know in some detail, which yeah. is why I you know I was sort of I think I I knew I wanted to watch the coronation but I didn't realize how much I needed to, until I mm. was I was I was in fact absorbed into it and then recognized whatever you whatever you think about the individuals who were doing it the king or the archbishop, um you know. Camilla, the, the participants, <laughs> there, the, the, there was some, I mean, I, I think the only one I saw completely unironically was William, Prince William, um, mm. but uh, maybe his, his family, right? But the, certainly Harry was, he's not in our photos <laughs> very much. I think maybe we caught him in one because he was mm -hmm. kind of farther the back. Um, that it, it was interesting though, that the nation didn't do it ironically, which I really appreciated. I, and I I did mm. read I've, I read a, a little bit of the coverage I think Peter Hitchens did a powerful piece and he's saying was it Hitchens when I saw this I did I did read his um there was some there was some sense of um how much of the city was actually taken up with the coronation because it was from the abbey and the road down to the the palace and you couldn't mm. really tell from the way the camera coverage showed you how much more of the city was but you know i'm used to living in chicago where you can run you know a multi you know thousands and thousands person um marathon down through the city center of the city and nobody notices if you're not downtown it, it's like london mm -hmm. is huge right so if, if all of yeah. london was not taken over by this particular pageantry that's not necessarily a surprise um yeah. it's certainly way bigger than it was in 1953 but but mm. but but the feel I got of it and the coverage and the I mean it was mainly I didn't I watched the live stream I watched had subtitles but it didn't have any commentary which just thinking out loud right now I realized was very good I was just you saw it it was it was the thing you could see and there was a lot of camera work we'll you will show you there was you know the the the, the placement mm. of the cameras was interesting um, but also. Mm -hmm very carefully considered so that they were able to show show there was it was a very very visual mm. um event it was uh going back to what you were saying about william and and uh kate versus harry who was unaccompanied by his wife <laughs> <laughs> and the hatred that a lot of people had for him you know everyone laughing at him it's interesting that if you say in the the new west no i'm a monarchist people will think you're uh uh and the this institution is completely redundant yet they'll mock harry mm -hmm. and it's 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 strange because he's essentially just done what all of the Republican nations of the world have done and he's rejected the the ideal he rejected his birthright and his heritage and part of that is that he was to embody masculinity and so in like giving up his title and giving up being a working role and going, going to join what's her face over there in uh, Disneyland um <laughs> It's like that's the capital of my country, don't you know? Wait, I uh, know <laughs> our, our fake <laughs> castle, right? Or they got two of them—one in Florida and one in in, yes. in California. It's like we need the palaces, the castles, but they're in theme parks. Yeah, uh, it, you still our want theme it, park but palaces? That, yeah, yeah, the, theme park palaces. But uh, his birthright to embody 
embody the masculine ideal. And that's why people hate him. It's yeah. not because he got cucked by his wife. He's, he's done something which I think has hit a very deep instinct in everybody in abandoning his, uh, mm -hmm. his role. And that is the interesting thing about the, the Harry's and the coronation. So when people are angry at him for doing this, you sort of think you do see value in this institution. Mm -hmm. You do you see value in these titles and these uh, aristocratic inheritances? And that's the fascinating thing about it. So, yeah, I was. Uh, that's really good. I was like. Mm. So, was, was if Harry. If there was no was, value, there'd be no rage. Was Harry the one who was in helicopter? The... Yes. <laughs> oh, my <Sorry>. goodness. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. He was your own planet. And then, <laughs> but he, but he flew helicopters, right? Is that is that he right? He did. He was a helicopter. He was a helicopter pilot. Uh huh. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of foreshadowing. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> no, I hadn't considered. It's like he. I mean, it was interesting. He was there, and and there was this feeling of, um, you know, the the Kate, but Prince William and and Kate and and their children were mm -hmm. i i thought they were best dressed of all of them right i i, I it was like clearly the medievalist in me was was absolutely delighted in the 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 um cloaks and the i don't know much heraldry but you know because it's not monastic but that they they were mm -hmm. um they looked glorious as the family and mm -hmm. um the the you know the sad thing for harry was he's not he i mean he could have been there right he was supposed to have been there <laughs> with them on the balcony with them in the in 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 the um the the abbey and it, as you're talking about what he gave up it it's something it, it we're supposed to feel jealous of them but we don't i don't i've never felt jealous of the the royals and it didn't feel to me like the people watching that you could see in the crowds and things they don't feel jealous they felt happy that they had mm. people with crowns on which was very interesting yes it was very interesting and and i know i mean i know from family context and things like that that not everybody loves them my my husband who is actually english didn't watch <laughs> so i don't need to see that what no <laughs> no I, you know it's like here i am the american watching i'm up i'm up early right and he was up early for doing something else right and and i'm like i'm ready i'm gonna go watch the coronation he's like uh-huh so you know that <laughs> and and you know i appreciate in America. I, I appreciate i the medievalist right i appreciate the arguments that people make about you know oh well if only you know they had you know all that money that you know goes into maintaining that family so that they can you know live in these palaces and so forth it was if it, i mean usually the fantasy is like if he just unlocked it all and threw it out into the world you know people would no longer be poor now i do have some meditations on that based on some of the the um, scenes that that I have in our slides, um, mm -hmm. but what you're describing and saying, you know, there's a there's an anger at Harry for throwing that away. What does that mean? That that's very very interesting because there's there's all the, there's all the Republican arguments and all the socialist arguments to say that this family should not have the, and have the stature that it does. And the one of the interesting things that I don't think I truly appreciated before I read some of the coverage is nobody else does this there's like one other country in the world that actually still has a proper coronation ritual and and mm -hmm. and and the other thing about it is that the english one is that on which all other coronations are modeled because certain elements of it allegedly go back to you know the earliest anglo-saxon kings and therefore it's it's this like archetypal coronation um ritual and mm. it's more than a ritual it's 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 something like it's tapping into all of this not just history and and tradition and pageantry and something but something as you were talking about really essential that only the british is, only yeah. the english do right now <laughs> mm, right now <laughs> um diehard restorationist it'll be hundreds of years and i'll still be screaming from the rooftops <laughs> um 
Um, you know, I, I watched the Marie Antoinette documentary mm. not long ago and it had me in tears because this this claim that you'll get rid of these this ruling family, the wealth, and then it will be a utopia, that was the French promise. Very good point. We get rid of Louis and Marie Antoinette and then suddenly everyone will be living in this paradise and we won't have to worry about this Austrian wench anymore. I mean, is France utopia? There is no um, greater example of republicanism as a promise of paradise than France. <laughs> it's just <laughs> fair, fair. Why <laughs> would you? <laughs> well, I don't know. Like you have this uh, ability to have an indigenous ruling family because that's what a good monarchy should be. Mm. It should be indigenous. Well, these people the are only they're German. Not, they're not. I know. Which is that's my problem with them <laughs> but but as we pointed out they, previously none of them ever were it's like the anglo-saxons no, no. right they were invaders the normans famously invaders um but, you know the tudors well sort you know take over the english crowns even though the welsh had been invaded um james the, you know the, the stuarts are um, scotland mm -hmm. and then they kick they they chop his um which which one is is Charles his brother? It's like Charles one chops head chopped off, Charles two restoration, James the yes. second uh, ousted by a Dutchman, <laughs> and then because they run out of his, Everyone's they spots, run out yeah. of they run out of children. Even though Anne has a gazillion of them and none of them live, they end up with guess what Germans, right? So mm. it's <laughs> still better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure your indigenous claim is going to work here. The, 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 the well, last thing they are is indigenous. I'm not they're just, Windsors, that's know, a fake I'm, name I'm, to hide the fact I'm that they're not, Germans. <laughs> I'm, I I know, but I'm Coburg, what is it, Saxe, Coburg, Gotha. Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about the British one. I'm talking about all of them. So I'm thinking like... Yeah, but they're know, all just related to each other. Globally. You know very well we have World War One because of the cousins. I, okay, fine, fine. I'll scratch it. I'll take it out. The hot, the yeah. hot. Word you don't, you don't get indigenous on this one. I don't get to have it. Right. No. Still, I want my, I want my houses. You want something. <laughs> we keep the houses. Well, no, but this is, uh, yes. this is, it's like, so we want, it's like clearly these, these royals are related to, you know, each other, but not necessarily the people they're ruling over, and yet they seem to better belong to the people than the. Republican government. I mean, certainly our government doesn't belong to us anymore. Who knows who's who's running here? <laughs> uh, yeah, good question. Yeah. <laughs> Being taken over um, by you know foreigners is, is, in 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 the the strictest sense is basically the fate of nations. So, you know, mm -hmm. where we mm -hmm. some study some history. <laughs> well, okay. So in this case, then you're you're idealizing them. I think because they sound English. Actually, though, okay, no, I've, I'm sorry, I've, I've interrupted. No, I've interrupted no, your no. flow. I've interrupted your flow. But going back to uh, your your other obsession with, with English as a language, right? Remember, I speak great, you know, true, deep. I don't know what you speak. I speak Elizabethan English because all Americans do because the they 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 carried on with our the old dialects, right? Because the British in the 18th century when the Hanoverians come in I'll start speaking posh and so <laughs> <laughs> where the true Hello. English <laughs> bloody palms don't ask me where this accent came from I don't know <laughs> you bloody palms was... <laughs> how dare you take I my my hair is giving me really strange experiences tonight I've got these little like sideburns now it's because you need a crown oh. see Okay. Crowns they solve they solve all sorts of problems. Well, maybe maybe um, we maybe maybe we need a proper invitation. I think we I think we need to we we meet so King Charles the Third coronation sixth of May twenty twenty three. We need a proper invitation. The coronation mm -hmm. of their Majesties. There's a plural here. King Charles the yeah. Third and Queen Camilla. I, I'm not buying it. I, she's not really queen. Um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> by command of the, actually though she is, I mean, the queen is the, the wife of the king and I guess she is, and, and she won't be the first divorcee <laughs> to, <laughs> or maybe, or he won't be, he, he's not the first divorcee to, to end up on the throne. Cause of course, famously 
those tutors. But did he's it. technically a widower. Yeah, but they'd gotten divorced before she died, right? Yeah, but then if even if you don't, or were they just divorced, separated? She's dead. No, they were divorced. I think. Camilla's a divorcee. She's a divorcee. So maybe that. So maybe that's the problem. Well, just as we just proved that there is no such you know, that the indigeneity doesn't hold that the chastity and. <laughs> Let me have my ideals. No, no, I'm going to rip them all like, apart. You see, you see, <laughs> do they rip them away? I want my old brutally, fantasy. Brutally. I want my castle. I want my indigenous monarchs. Now all I've got is a divorcee, a German king. God help me. Carolus. His true name is Carl or Charlemagne. We're not sure, right? Carolus. Charlemagne? He, he's, he's Carlus Tertius right now. <laughs> Rex Carolus Tertius. Camilla, that's, that's a, a cool that's name. an interesting name. Okay, by command of the king. Cam Wait, how how can he be is he already king before he's crowned? I don't understand this invitation. The Earl Marshal is directed to invite and and then this is the actual invitation that was sent to the the people who got to be in the abbey. Um, to be present mm -hmm. at the Abbey Church of Westminster on the 6th day of May, 2023. Um, fun fact, I, I, I recognized the, the artwork of this invitation when um, it was floating around. It's a wait, I've seen him on Facebook. <laughs> he's a, he's oh, Andy, J yes. Andy Jameson. He does lovely, lovely. I think you can commission him to do this kind of work for you common people that we are um and 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 he did a, a a magnificent job of the the floral and the the there are two um devices right there i said i didn't do heraldry i do understand the green man at the bottom though and i think he, he put that in there for charles's love of the environment but we don't know what those green men are so that's a that's a bit of an ambiguous symbol <laughs> hmm. they're just in all the churches for some reason and in dan brown novels don't get me spurging about Merovingians. Um, so I, okay, so I got lost. Now I don't know where I am. I, I've ripped, I've ripped to shreds all of your claims of monarchy, monarch, mar, you monarchical, you, you just monarchical idealism of of lineage and and nation. These guys are, just, they're foreigners ruling she just over people. Speared, she rob speared my thought train. That's what you did. Oh, that's why, because I was thinking about French Revolution. So replace institution and then thinking that you're going to get the utopia after you're replacing the institution. That's what I was thinking about. So, so either of these Australia. neither of these work actually. So we do not get the okay, now if you do that, I'm gonna start thinking of the execution of, of Louis and the feeling of a, a trial that is determined to kill you no matter what, but is gonna to pretend to be going through the motions. Let's not go there. We had yes. <laughs> don't get me in trouble again. Uh, no. <laughs> Bear, Where Bear gives us a super chat and I th I'm 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 Ooh. I'm I'm um <clears throat> I think it's an Elvish <laughs> at ARL A R Rello in Dorena Utulian, Sinome Maruvan Ar Hilden Yar Ten Ambar Meta. I really, I really, I'm sorry, Weir Bear, I can't read Elvish very well. When we're translated, I'm so embarrassed. Google <laughs> Translate. No, it's, I, I, I suspect it has something to do with the coronation of, of Aragorn. It better be. Weir Bear, can you please tell us in the chat? I, I, read, I read it out. Okay. Um, fencing bear, like the object or the sport, the sport, I'm a fencer and, 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 but not much of a heraldist or seeing as I can't, I can't read Elvish or I can read Latin. I do that really well. Um, she does. Yeah. But not, but, I can't but, confirm. But, but anyway, so <laughs> no, it's, it's the, the, what's interesting. And I will like try to retrieve this from, from my, my, my filthy American paws. Um, Despite knowing all of these things, we still have the sense that there it matters that there is a monarch, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 I I do so. Milo was saying in his in his chat about this. It's like the the difference between you know the English um, or the, the the those in the under the Commonwealth and the rest of us is 
he says, we actually know who rules over us. You all don't, um, <laughs> which we're not sure about Charles either, but like who, you know, who's in charge of what, but um, yes. the, the one, the one absolutely concrete thing a monarch does is give you a focus of this is the head of, of the state or should mm -hmm. be really should be. And I think, I think it w I'd be more convinced in an argument for monarchy if Charles had real power rather than ceremonially only, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to the way in which oligarchs rule, which is all behind the scenes and, and, um, deceptively. Okay. Werebear. Oath of Elendil. Thank you. It um, out of the great sea to Middle Earth I am come. In this place will I abide in my heirs unto the, the end. Who who says it, Werebear? I I'm really oh Elendil says it. Oh, oh, from um golly, I'm I'm nervous and I'm trying to think about Charles. Uh it's it's uh well help me, Werebear. Werebear, help, help. Um <laughs> An example of non-indigenous royal lineage. Thank you. Okay, bless you. Um, well, it's, I don't think there is such a thing as indigenous royal. All the thing, kings we can think of aren't. <laughs> well, there are kings that have. Uh, oh, you're you're, you're thinking in Ethiopian terms again. This is it. I am, um, but also in the in the Middle Eastern and. Yeah, I mean, I can't help myself. <laughs> it's where I am mentally, but um, yeah, they do have this uh, this idea of having uh, you know what people would term tribal chieftains that are mm. themselves kings, and then on top of them, the uh, you know either an emperor or a sultan or you know leaf if it's a kind of Islamic Sharia based environment, and. Um, it's just, it makes sense. I, I mean, like, I I don't know any Arab Republicans. Like, none, none of them are Republicans. So, and when I first started speaking to people from Arabia, specifically, it's, a, it's an interesting thing in Arabia, specifically Arabia, because they've had this incredibly rapid technological transformation thanks mm. to the, the importation of Western technology. So... They've gone from nomadic people that have essentially relied on pearl fishing and uh, eating seafood and dates and camel milk to having a city like Dubai or, you know, right. um, having these countries like Qatar or Kuwait. And, of course, the British built them up. The British invented all of these Arab countries. But it's interesting to me, even with this uh, importation of the British technology and, and British industrialism, they have not themselves imported the British rebelliousness that colonies that have rejected British monarchy. You mm. know, it's like it's it's a specific thing. It's an interesting and specific thing with British people that call themselves Americans <clears throat> or New Zealanders or Australians or Canadians that they'll give themselves a different term rejecting their uh mothership you know the, the right the, 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 the americans the talk of themselves as americans rather than english is a good yeah it's very that's, it's very strange that's, that's a really good example it's odd i mean uh, you know same with australians you just, they say oh i'm australian what is that <laughs> it means i'm british but i reject being british it's just very strange <laughs> Like what? Why is that? If, who's on your money? King Charles. Oh, okay, so you're still British. Now we're Australian. Okay, bro. <laughs> we did it cool to story. ourselves, clearly. <laughs> this whole thing. We're losing our nationality. We're losing you know, it's like, yeah, you you threw it away. <laughs> you nitwits. Yeah. But but Arabs don't do that. So they import all of these British technology country you know, uh, very rapidly on oil money and suddenly there's this high tech, it's like high tech Arabia, right. but still literally in high too. They, in, in, in these towers they build are enormous. Yeah. Half a mile yeah. high. Yeah. The Burj Khalifa, uh, you know, this like, uh, it, yeah, just all these, you know, amazing structures and everything, but they wanted to keep the social structure intact because they've recognized that there is value there is more value in keeping their social structure intact 
than there is in having those skyscrapers in the middle of the desert. Mm. And that's the fascinating thing about Arabs. When you talk to them and you talk to them about the sheikhs or the chiefs or whatever, you know, I made the big mistake. I was in Dubai once and I was joking around. I was being too Australian for my own good. And I was saying something about the, the, the ruler of uh, the Emirates, the Emir who passed away not long ago. I said how he looked like Jafar from Aladdin. Oh, I got into such trouble. And the cold, ice, glacial mm. chill that came through the room when I said what I said. And then they, you know, they said, we have great respect for our Emir here. Mm. And that was it. Nothing. No yes. Question. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Index twice. So because, you know, convicts, we have rejected our own authority as civilization. And I, so these people, it was a kind of interesting contrast. And it really made me appreciate why monarchy is so important. Because without it, you do not have any continuity keeping you anchored in your ancient traditions to get you through enormous technological surges nothing which it's chaos so yeah is a great is a great segue to our first slide right okay so i'm watching the i'm <coughs> excuse me i start watching the coronations and it's like oh yeah 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 and this moment happens he's carrying a book I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get, get this right. <laughs> and it's, no, it, it, it's, it's, it's amusing to me because the, the, the first thing I actually, it's like, I, I'm awake at five in the morning. Okay, they're in the Abbey, great pageantry. Well, you know, I, I've been around British. I met a few aristocrats and stuff like that. They have a special quality, right? And I, I, I <laughs> I'm American enough. The, and my husband, who's English, doesn't want to watch, right? That we're, I didn't think I was <laughs> going to be enchanted by any of this. And then this book came in. Mm. And, of course, this is a perfect segue to what you were just saying, because, okay, the one thing that got me excited, did I say there was a book? <laughs> it's the Gospel of St. Augustine. And I knew I, I I actually I was prepared to to recognize it because in Christopher de Hamel's wonderful book Meetings with Remarkable Manuscripts he talks about this this book and he he actually talks about how what it's the paper is so thin on it when they carry it 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 like flutters a bit right because the parchment is so fine um, it is um, the the gospel book that is by tradition said to have been one of the ones that um, Augustine brought to Canterbury when he came to convert Ethelbert of Kent, right? It, it, I think mm. there's a little, maybe some question about whether it was actually his, but on the other hand, it's old enough and it's there, it's Italian. It's, it's there in, in England. It's been, been there in England. It's in Cambridge now, um, Parker library. You can see a full facsimile replica of it on the Stanford site. It's, you know, and literally all the medievalists that I know on their on their social media went the book the book was there, right? So it's open to the Gospel of Luke, and I will not embarrass myself as I did with not being able to read Elvish. <laughs> um, the Saint Augustine Gospels. It's Cambridge Corpus Christi College uh, manuscript two eighty six. Um, it's been in the Parker Library since fifteen seventy five. It was made in Italy and has been in England since fairly soon after its creation. So. We think it came with Augustine, or it certainly came with one of the first generation of of missionaries. Um, it um, it it's showing um, Luke uh, uh, with the, the 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 opening right here is showing Luke, and there's a on the title caption that the auto captioning was giving. I'm recovering sight to the blind to set at liberty them, and then carrying on with the prayer. Um, this is the reason we have the monarchy we do. Mm. And and so it was it was incredibly significant that they were carrying it. It's like into the abbey, into this space where we're going to have an anointing. Mm. Um, we can't see it because in the next slide, they put a screen around the king while they anoint him. So it's the most sacred moment in the actual ceremony. Um, nobody gets to see except the priests who are doing it. And I th I think I knew about I knew to expect the screen because some people were talking about the. The ritual beforehand and i don't remember how when was like they were saying nobody sees it right it's like literally the most important moment because they're with sacred oil anointing him as the as the king 
And that is not part of the public ritual. Nobody has ever gotten to see that. It's only the priests. And mm -hmm. so here, they to perform it, they have the um, the guards holding this uh, tree of paradise, I think, right? It's got angels and, and, and our favorite bird um, in, in it. And that's the moment when he's actually king. I, I think it's not when the crown mm -hmm. is. It's, it's when he's taken on that sacred office. And so yeah. why do we think that? Oh, right, because of that book that they just carried in, because we're Christian. And mm -hmm. therefore, the model of monarchy we have, like the kings themselves, is imported. The book came from Italy. The stories came from yes. <laughs> the Holy Land. And mm -hmm. th this is this is one of the central features of when I when I teach my medieval England class, and then I realized I was actually interested in the whole thing because I realized that I was I was in this narrative of England's we said it's the oldest coronation ritual that we know of in this this Christian fashion for Europe. I anyway, I never mind who whether I don't I don't like doing superlatives because I know I'll be wrong. Um that nothing about the English monarchy is native. Mm. Yes. I mean, maybe some of it, maybe we'll get to. So they anoint him and then they they give him a sword. Okay, fine. The sword, of course, ended up with a, because the the woman was holding it for some time and she had to hold really still. I, I didn't see those until oh, later. Yeah. So she's not really in my, in my um uh, screenshots because she wasn't featured in it. But, you know, he, he's given a sword. He's given the orb, which is great. I think most of this regalia is later. I think the sword is from the 18th century and the the orb these all look more recent to me um he's given a gauntlet which okay guys watching there fencing bear this is the only place i was really like yeah it's a fencing glove <laughs> that's that's i mean i'm using my fencing hand when i'm doing that and that, it's, it's exactly the kind of glove we have to put on it's like covers your wrist and you know, so there, but he, he'd been holding the sword before he put the glove on. I don't know how you could do that. Um, and then he's, he's given, and, and the, here's the, here comes the crown, right? The hat, the fancy hat. Mm -hmm. But all of this is, is, is subsequent to his anointing because mm -hmm. the monarchy, as we understand it in Christianity is modeled on David's anointing and, and, yes. and the Anglo-Saxons in their understanding of monarchy throughout the early period before the Normans show up and, you know, try to steal it, um, are constantly consciously modeling themselves on David. Always. <laughs> Israelitish practices. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, so the example of the where bear is unpronounceable. I'm still, I'm going to die. You guys are going to mock me forever and never watch my Tilford and Chulk anymore because I didn't recognize that. But, <laughs> but I'm dying. Why did that have to come up in the middle of my quarter teaching Tolkien? We're about to finish Tolkien tomorrow. I'm going to tell them about, you know, the, the song of the Eagles as a psalm and I've, I've lost all my cred. Um, <laughs> All right. No, but say the example of non-indigenous royal lineage, the, the, the interesting thing about all of, I can recover it maybe a little bit here. Um, all of Tolkien's stories is one he's, he's fascinated by um, the, the, the sort of prelude parts in Beowulf, where it talks about shield sheafing who shows up and he's, you know, like shows up in a boat and he's, he's King. And they, when he dies, they send him back out in a, in a, in a boat. Um, and in Tolkien's notes, to his lectures on shield sheafing, who's mentioned, you know, in, as the in the lineage of of the kings and in, in mm -hmm. the, the prelude to Beowulf and such, and he says, you know, that 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 lineage goes back to the gods, right? And our queen, our the present queen, trace can trace her lineage back to those. Like the lineages are there, but mm -hmm. the whole point about shield sheafing in the story is he comes in a boat. Um, and so Alindal as the Noah character, right, being, you know, leaving Numenor as it's drowning because they've tried to, to sail west, um, mm. sail west. The eagles, ooh, this is good. The, the, the eagles of the, the eagles of the lords of the west come over Numenor and it, it drowns, right? Um, that all of England's kings have this feeling of they come from elsewhere, including even in their, like, most ancient stories. Mm. It's interesting. Did it's I redeem like, uh, myself, Werebear? Or is he still there? 
Tolkien got it. Mort Love Bear. Tolkien got it. Tolkien totally got it. Because he's German. His The Tolkien's were actually German. He thinks of himself as English, but he recognizes also that the name was previously from Germany. It just reminds me of Joseph. You know, he ends up uh, he ends up second under Pharaoh and he's a foreigner. Mm -hmm. That's, it, it has a biblical resonance there of having an imported aristocracy. Joseph, so... Maybe that's why I'm sort of, sort of on that point because, in my vision of things, the monarchy marries the country. It's the ceremony around this coronation. Is really a formal marriage between the ruling class and the people that they're ruling. This is like, again, my ideal. And if you no, this one, this one, no, 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 because I'm gonna. No, 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 no. This one I'll go with. Get tried. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 this one I'll go with. Keep going. This one, this one, okay. I, this one I grant you absolutely. All right. So, thank you. <laughs> That's was, much more accurate than the other things you were saying. <laughs> well, because it's sacred, right? It's like this. Yeah. The, the, what this? What this ceremony? And this is. I did enjoy watching it so much because. The solemnity was there. The so we do have. Um, I mean, so the it, the interesting is like now he's got the hat, he's got the sticks. I mean, there there are ways in which he looks just like Richard the Richard the Second in this in one of his, mm -hmm. his great painting because he's got all of the regalia now that the throne, the chair. In this in in this moment, the Archbishop is kneeling and and you know it's like the, this recep re reciprocity between the Archbishop and the King is very interesting because that book that I got so excited about, you know, belonged to the first archbishop mm -hmm. of Canterbury. And this archbishop of Canterbury is both necessary to the king and the kneels in recognizing that he's anointed him. But this the sort of where the where the sacred comes from is multiply um reflected in this moment. Mm. Well Something is changing. That would be like my instinctive way of describing what is sacred. It, sacred means something is about to change mm. in, uh, irreversibly and um, profoundly. There is going to be a change. And the idea behind having the king coronated is he's taking on the burden of the entire people that he's uh he's going to be over so really it's a kind of reversal it's a role reversal in a lot of ways which is the kind of funny thing about it because as though you're looking at someone very rich who's being uh given more power you know so oh he's getting even more power true at the same time he's also been given of the the title that he inherited, you know, it's sort of, he's about to die sort of feeling there yeah. because previously he was just Charles, you know, he was uh, just Charles, but you know, Prince of Wales, like it's a, he no, was a he different got to person. Be, he got before. to be the prince. He got to be just Charles. I thought, so it was interesting yeah. to me. I, yeah. I can, I think it was Peter. I'm not sure who's, I, sorry, I didn't do my references. Um, that, th th so the dynamic between the archbishop and the king when i mean one this feels so medieval it's like the number of times i've said the archbishop and the king right mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, which is it is it Anne Selm and henry and 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 william the second whom he's having to go in exile because the, you know, one of the features of the archbishops and the kings is they kept getting in fights with each other right yeah <laughs> particularly after the normans show up and you know you got lanfranc and you got anselm and then you got nothing but you know beckett right <laughs> <laughs> to the reason they have a shrine at, at Canterbury and pilgrimages and stuff is because the king's men killed the archbishop, right? So it's not like an easy relationship. Well, um, that's interesting. It's kind of like having, a bit, you know, someone to keep you in check. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, who, no, it's who like gets the, to keep the, the, the king in check. It makes this, sense. And 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 so watching. So I I think I have Wellberry next. No, I can, I don't remember where I put him. There he is. 
right? That, that I, you know, I, I what, he's used to doing ritual, right? Mm -hmm. Wellberry is, I mean, he may, be, he may not be Catholic, but mm -hmm. he, you know, he, as a priest, he's, he's, he's practiced in ceremony. And I mean, mm. he was, I, he was obviously having the time of his life, right? <laughs> he, oh, yeah. Was, yeah. He, was, yeah. he was so <laughs> yeah. happy. And I, I think I, there's some undercurrents there because not everybody is happy with Wellbury in the Anglican communion right now. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> all of Africa, Why? for example. Well, they're upset with variety of, you know, novelties that the, this archbishop is oh, willing gotcha, to, gotcha, to gotcha. allow into the church. Hmm. <laughs> never mind that he's not catholic so you know what kind of church is this but but i the thing on the day i have really appreciated him because he was he was he was just it was it was there was a joy and i hope it was innocent not gleeful right of mm. we're here in this moment of of consecration he mm -hmm. and he did i mean it, it, I, I don't don't people don't tell me he was a bad guy Welby, what's his Welby? What's his name? I, I'm I'm bungling all my languages then, tonight. Let me Google. You can Google. It's like I got loading no more Welby. Who or what is this placeholder? Sausage fingers. No, come on. The official opposition. Guys, 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 come on. Let's have a look. What's his name? That guy. Not Melbourne. Oh, they they're they're talking. Where Bear and Lodi and Mortloaf are talking about somebody somebody else. England. Where Welby. Yeah. What did I say? Well, yeah, Welby. Justin Welby, Archbishop okay, of go. Canterbury. Welby. Yes. The hundred and fifth Archbishop of 105th. Canterbury. Hundred and fifth. He's the leader of the Anglican Communion. Yeah. Go on down the Wikipedia and see whether they say anything nasty about him, because then then he'd be a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> it says prime. It, you know what's funny? It says primate of England, and I wrote. I read it as pirate of English. <laughs> She's mind controlled me. Um, I have not paid as much attention to Welby. I've read for like Rowan William when Rowan Williams was was Archbishop. He he did some. The thing is, I I'm you know now that I'm Catholic, I I used to be Episcopalian. I'm I'm confused, right? Oh yes, he succeeded that gent with the very strange eyebrows. Gotcha. All okay, right. that does not distinguish among Englishmen, but <laughs> <laughs> they specialize in those eyebrows. I don't know how they do it. They 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 grow them long. They get everything right. They anyway, let's go back. Out. Let's go back a little bit to where the Archbishop is. I don't. Kneeling. I don't see scandals here, unfortunately. But you know, I'm sure it won't take long for me to find them. Um, but he looked very happy. Yeah, he, he looked like he was having a great time. But but it, at least in the moment, in the ceremony, Charles, on the other hand, as you were saying, it's like that crown is heavy, one, and that crown is yeah. heavy. Right? It's like you're saying that he's yeah. that this this anoint. He looked different, which I you know, it's like been apprenticing for this role for his whole life, and he's in his seventies. Mm. Um, but I mean, he looked. I, 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 it was Hitchens because. One of the gleeful things that Welby is able to pull off here is they're using they're, they're very, a lot of the ritual was older and 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 within the tradition, but other things that they were doing, including there was I think some of the things that Charles had to say about service was newly scripted, um, and that mm. what Charles actually belongs to a, a um, society that wants to preserve the older prayer book. Yes. And that they didn't use that, right? So this is not Charles in power. This is Charles submitting to the ritual insofar as the priests who are overseeing it have scripted it for him to a certain extent. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the yeah. thing is, Charles, I mean, he said odd things about architecture and he's, you know, climate change and stuff like that, but he's not actually completely in control of this whole ceremony, <laughs> even though it's about him, allegedly, mm. or not. I mean, it's it's about something, but it's not specifically about Charles. He's having to play. He's having to be in that position to get that crown on his head. Camilla, I'm not so sure, but Charles. I mean, he, it was clear that the, the weight of all of that regalia was real, both physically and spiritually for him. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking the the script. I mean, it's drama. 
which seen in the the ironic Hollywood perspective of drama is just entertainment. Right. But this is drama that's not entertainment. This is drama that is reworking the identity of an entire nation of people. Dramatic processing of an entire nation of people. Right. That is a high level of drama. And so this, even if he doesn't necessarily have any ceremonial authority, you know, he can't get his own prayer book in there. It's a heavy thing to be the center of that drama, to be the protagonist of that drama, because he's just taken the British people from the, you know, the second Elizabethan era into what whatever we're, we're living in there huge thing to be doing um and it's not just the the british isles that are staring at this it's the entire commonwealth mm -hmm. all of the world that, that has been people is processed in this one drama so you could see it on his face i, I mean i could see it he was <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't excitement like oh great another rolls royce you know this right. was a different level of um solemnity than I think a lot of people are willing to consider because uh, everything's been so, I mean, everything has been so Americanized. I'll, I'll speak as an Australian. The way that we, we're uh, discussing politics here all the time now, we're basically Republicans, mm -hmm. but we haven't, we haven't removed the monarchy. It's interesting because we had the referendum for the Republican vote. Australians didn't want it. We're carrying forward this English parliamentary democracy that needs the king, has to have the king. There's something about the solemnity of that moment that it gives every to enjoy our own profanity, I think. And by profane, I mean something outside of the sacred. Right. Because there's a security in it, you know. Otherwise, what we've done is we've lost the queen that was reigning over an empire and then, you know, the queen who was the head of our, uh, our commonwealth here. She's dead. She's buried. With her and her and and her departure it's uh, the currency changes it's not just the money you know the faces on the money that changes it's 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 the entire national identity of everyone that has been living during that that particular era so we uh, you know, as uh, as I demonstrated in my <laughs> disaster in Dubai, we don't take these things very seriously down here because we are uh, we exist as as refuse from this system. I mean, mm. the British very purposefully kicked us out, which is an interesting thing. When the Americans are equivocating us with Americans, we're not. We didn't choose to leave. We've never decided. Right. We've never purposefully done 1776 and rejected Britain ever, even with our hyper americanization australians do not want to reject the british system british monarchic system it's a fascinating thing because we rely on this in order to have our own freedom as you know profess i think in a lot of ways and it's an unexpressed um subconscious thing in, in australia um so without them without that tradition we don't know who we are we don't know where we're going really you know we're kind of spinning out of control down here I mean, elizabeth was on the coins mm -hmm. elizabeth is gone mm -hmm. so who are we then we don't know okay it's fine charles is here even if he does nothing like in terms of his actual influence or his ability to do anything even having his own prayer book ritual he provides an icon for the era that we're living in like the metronome for us as a as a as a colony somehow mm -hmm. i don't know it's like iconic metronomes the best way i could describe it 
so this is actually so this is getting closer to what I would when I think about yes having the king means there's there's a a, a, a sacred center and a meaning to the community mm. yep and of course you know the United States we're, we're oscillating it's like Trump is obviously not you know it's like the the, the I, I was watching something this morning and seeing some of the CNN interview he did and stuff like that. It's like, no, we have nothing but showmen. I mean, every it's easy. Yeah. It's, it's easy to ridicule the United States because we're nothing but, but you know, hucksters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Business. So it's nothing but, you know, businessmen and, and yeah. pirates. Okay. Pirate pirates have better suit uh, hats, but um, we don't have, we, the, we have no sacred core and yeah. uh, that, that is, when one something that you and I have been very interested in and in, in thinking yes. about it's my one of my favorite British novels about the United States is of course American Gods <laughs> where Gaiman is trying to show how there's this you know the mythology still lives here even mm -hmm. though we basically deny it all right we're always shopping yes. malls and and huckstering and interstates and such and Gaiman in his story mm -hmm. finds it like we did last summer right finds the the sacred mythological transcendent spiritual reality hidden in you know the carousels and the the garden gnomes and the you know all of these this is, we, we've destroyed it which you can't because the world lives is alive and spiritual and, and real um mm. well you don't live in the you don't live in a monarchy but you live in the magic kingdom because right it's a symbol that's yeah. it we live in disneyland because that's yeah. our that is in in fact our only sacred story center, and so yes, it, we live in Disneyland, which is a cartoon, you know, it's sometimes literally cartoon version of actual transcendent. Uh, and, and yeah. that's a transcendent is not right. That there's it's the transcendent is God, right? We're going to get to that. So this is, I mean, as we've been talking right now, I've been showing the the view from the altar to, down the nave. Right. So the people there in, in the and one of the interesting things I, I realized, duh, about the, the, the way the ceremony was being performed is Charles has his back to the people the whole time. Mm. He's not looking at Welby. Are these looking at Welby? It wasn't a, it wasn't a pentacle coastal coronation <laughs> no well they did they did have they did have some singing the varieties of singing right that there were there were there yes. were different modes of singing um <laughs> that so here he is he's seated uh, he moved around uh, he's changed costumes many times and moved around in different chairs and stuff and i got lost right but he's he mm -hmm. he never looks as you said gleeful or joyous or giddy mm -hmm. or anything like that there's nothing of that he's like beyond solemn which mm -hmm. I mean, I recognize the same face that he had when he was at his mother's funeral, which was difficult. I mean, I think whenever your parents die, it's it's huge because not just as um, as you've been describing the way when the monarch dies, the whole kingdom mourns. Yes. It's you're losing your parents. Like the kingdom is yep. losing its its parents, and I think you know all of us have complicated relationships with our parents but something changes when you when you realize I, you're not there yet i know that from i think have you what well, you join this new club where oh my gosh like what just happened the world just shattered and i don't know who i am and i could see that on charles's face when his mother died mm -hmm. but it's still there right it's like how am i king what does that it even is. mean? Oh, look, Mortloaf Bear. Okay. Buzzsaw Bear, paying my misogyny away. Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an expensive thing to pay away. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why won't my... We have a kid starter, starter launching on the 22nd if you'd like to get rid of it permanently. <laughs> Sign up. Dragoncommonroom.com. We can cure sexism, racism not homophobia, bigotry, all sorts of things. Can't cure republicanism unless you give us a really high tier donation though. And well, we're going for monarchs here. Okay, so Puzzle Bear, pay my message anyway. Mortloaf Bear, having a blast, great stream. Bertaria, did I do it right? I'm better at that than I am at, at Elvish. Okay. Um, Kelly, I lost my lost. I I started. I lost my voice Sorry. as I started trying to take the <laughs> talk like, about my parents. I, Good job. <laughs> I had to do a radio.
we all had in the middle. You see what it you see what the world becomes when it's all marketing and you, you don't have solemn solemn continuity. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean I think uh, I think maybe one of the most restful things about watching this five hour live stream was it was just it was like I said, there was no commentary. There was no there was no, no ads for Coke no ads. at all throughout the whole thing. It was just the solemnity and you know, kudos to Charles, whatever he's done in his life complicated relationships with his 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 children and family and so forth he did this day right yeah but okay so he's sitting yeah. there in his in his chair he's an old man i mean it's it's one of the other comment i think maybe hitchens again was thinking about how when elizabeth was was crowned she was young and she was yes. surrounded by men who were older who were the 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 um, official you know the priests this is an old man surrounded by mostly younger men in the in the yeah. priesthood it, it's a it's it's like i mean it's a good symbol for how what are we now this old world that we live in a world of older people particularly in the west right so much of our population mm -hmm. is so much older what do we see now it i mean i'm gonna cry because this 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 charles just i don't think i saw him smile that you know for hours and and he mm -hmm. couldn't there's nothing to smile about in this moment it's very powerful mm. well crisis I mean, of the soul Lodi no more asked well we you know we may pray for him we need to pray for him he's we're, spe we're specifically instructed to pray for the authorities yep um and that's a difficult thing to do again it's easy to say oh well they're rich and powerful and screw the aristocracy but you know, you know pray for your enemies if they are your enemies they've been given in unimaginable amount of influence over the world and if placed in christ's control is powerful so it's not necessarily the institution that's the problem like any other technology we have it's what we do with it i mean most people don't want the internet to be destroyed. It's doing damage. <laughs> I think and any king alive in the history of the world could possibly do to people. And yet we just, you know, we log on every day, no problem. Yeah, it's the internet. Who cares if it's, you know, 80% horror. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, like, God save the king. Yeah. God save him. Uh, what kind of judgment do you have as a person going into meet the king of kings and then explaining yourself in your life? Imagine your life with a crown on it. Yep. Uh, that's that's a terrifying thought. <clears throat> so when he's seated, this is what he's looking at, which is the altar. Mm -hmm. And and I think when. We, you know they finished the the investment the investiture and i i get i kind of lost track of all the details of the prayers because i'm more used to mass right? mm -hmm. and they realized throughout it even though the cameras had been on him the throne was facing the altar so he was throughout this day facing an image of the last supper yes because it's an anglican church um, and, um, there was, there was this sort of feeling of, of kind of props, right? They had all the, the regalia on the table, the altar, but it felt like a table, right? a prop table, but that they were mm -hmm. taking them off and handing them to him and, and so forth. But then at, at, at this moment, Mortloaf Bear gravy. Okay. Mortloaf Bear. Thank you. Uh, we can always have fun tomorrow. Buzzsaw Bear. We will bathe our feet in the blood of our enemies. Isn't that Psalms? We will do a we will do a Psalms um, stream for sure because Psalms are big, mm -hmm. and and and, and um, um, Buzzsaw Bear that when we were talking earlier about how the the Anglo Saxon kings on whose lineage this whole practice is modeled saw themselves as David. David's the author of the Psalms, mm -hmm. and for example, King Alfred the great you know. As, as the Victorians saw him, the founder of the British Navy and things like that, um, was was um, believed to have done a translation of the Psalms. He certainly commissioned lots of translations, right? And so the Psalms are the the the, the heartbeat 
of this whole tradition and they're mm. davidic therefore they're royal and and so this this feeling of the king having a special role it's 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 it's, it's, it's somewhat because of his family and choosing the family but in in this christian tradition and therefore which becomes the you know the tradition of the the christian kings throughout the middle ages they are seen as carrying that anointing that david did and therefore they're of the lord mm -hmm. which therefore means they're like as you were just saying called to account in the in in those terms it's like you have a, yes. a lot more responsibility as king to the to to the lord than anybody else does because you are supposed to be modeling david yes yeah i mean that's the way it was in ethiopia the person of the right. emperor is sacred sacred doesn't mean uh beyond criticism but sacred means a specifically you know sanctified person who has a particular uh role mm -hmm. the sanctification is that anointing that they received during the coronation right it's the the davidic uh you know the davidic model of of what it means to take on the the kingship of of the people and it's not um it's not a, a license to uh how would i how would i describe it it's it's not supposed to it's be not a license, license. It's, tyranny it's, it's, yeah it's, it's not licensed it's not yeah it, 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 it's very very different uh the being sanctified for that role is essentially accepting a level of, of accountability to god that most people are simply unwilling to alone take on i mean that's the right the solemnity in that uh ritual will show you on the faces of the people that are being coroned exactly what, what is happening to them i mean it's you know it's a will. powerful it's a it's not mm -hmm. magic right but it's it's this i mean what i was thinking and, and your marriage i'm remembering your marriage analogy we're going to get to that um that the closest to lay people come to it is marriage right think yes. think about how seriously yes. you take the vows you take in your wedding mm. And now you're, and, and so the bishop is married to his church and therefore responsible for the whole church. The king is responsible to his people, yes. to all of his people. Now you've just married your nation. That's why Camilla seemed so out of place, I think, just thinking off the top of my head. It's like there's not a responsibility in the same way. Because well, she is the, not, she is not responsible for Charles's children. She's not. She's not. She has she has not given birth to his heirs. Right. The different. That's sense. why that why that's why it feels wrong. That that mm. that 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 couple's marriage is not part of the actual responsibility and lineage. It wasn't a fertile marriage. Right. Yeah, it's not part of the fertility, which makes sense. Why you were thinking about, about the age of the king and then the young, the youth around him. Camilla is not part of the youth. Right. Camilla is a dead dead end cul-de-sac you know there's 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 been no fruit from that union right whatever else i mean they may be uh, well matched so I, I it's not an insult to the two of them i can't judge on that point <laughs> but she didn't she didn't have the same but, she didn't have the place in that ceremony no because she's not the 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 mother of the next king. yes yes that's it yes. that's it she's not yeah. the mother of the next king and therefore she doesn't have the same place no. So actually, uh, Lodi No More has a good question. How do you know you're not getting a Gnostic hermetic alchemist as king? Well, gee, we've written this poem. Funny you mention that. <laughs> <laughs> we have indeed can thought a lot them? about alchemy. And <laughs> the question we will rephrase as, how do you know you're not getting a dragon? Right? Um, Drake Alchemicus, did we mention we're doing a Kickstarter? <laughs> yeah. For precisely exploring this mystery behind power mm -hmm. and alchemical power is coercive and addictive and glamorous mm -hmm. yes and i think um the to the degree to which so the, for me i think i didn't get a screenshot in our in our in our stack here for this for me the most powerful okay there's the moment of the book which was huge because it shows the actual like sacrality that this 
ceremony participates in. But when yes. William recognized his father as king, that was big. And and I do think I think yes. I think that that sense of I think we were talking about this in in our chat a little bit ago. It's like born to be king is not necessarily a gift, right? It was a gift, but yeah. it, you know, it's it's this. Yeah, you're there. That's it, right? You are now. Now I, I don't remember how we ex exactly phrased it. Um, well, it's like any. It's like a, a profession. If you said to somebody, "Okay, you uh, you have to become an electrician. I don't want to become an electrician. Well, suck it up. You're an electrician. Why? Because you were born to be an electrician. Most people would rebel. They would reject it. I don't want to become an electrician. How do I know I'm good at like you know? Electric circuits. No idea. No, no. no I remember it was when you were talking about how um, uh, government by by sex selection. How were you saying it? Oh, sex voting. Sex voting. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like who chooses the king? <laughs> God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> in I the did. moment of his conception, <laughs> and and then and then you yeah. and then you say it instead. So this is entirely a wedding. I mean, we're going to go for wedding here, I right? I forgot. I forgot about that. It, yeah. It's so look look back to the invitation, right? That looked like a wedding invitation, right? It was beautiful as a wedding. This was a wedding. Yes, it's all yes. entirely a wedding, which yes. is of course what Christ does with the church, right? And so when you were saying yes, yeah. so, and I was also thinking this, when people would, there's no such thing as a divine right of kings. That's a nonsense. That's a nonsense theory that's developed in the 17th century to try to keep the parliamentarians from cutting king's heads off, which didn't work, mm -hmm. right? Um, so all of the all of the language about divine right of kings has nothing to do with the Middle Ages. Erase that from your vocabulary if you're thinking about medieval um, understandings. It's It's a politically charged claim that, the kings in the 17th century are making when it's shifting in terms of what the office means. King by the grace of God means God chose you in the womb somehow or gave you victory in battle, which, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it feels, yeah. it should feel to the, to the human, from the human perspective, accidental, right? It's yes. Grace just falls on you. Which is very interestingly much closer to Athenian democracy than the weird democracy we live in now. Because mm. in ancient Athens, not everyone could vote. First off, women didn't have the vote. And you had to be a citizen of Athens, so an actual Athenian man, right. as opposed to someone who rocked up to Athens and decided that they would start voting for Athens. And then they cast lots and everyone got right. a turn. So it was like, place bets, you throw your name in the hat, and then it's like, oh, okay, okay you know, cost us is in this year and don't screw everyone over because next year you'll be out and then your neighbor, uh, Petros will be in <laughs> and then you're stuffed. So it's, you know, but it's, it's, it's an interesting thing because it's like, uh, okay, we've, we've, what have we got? We've got an aristocratic pool to draw from because obviously the class isn't going to marry down. But and they then, did. The Kings married down all the time. Did they? Oh yeah. Like how far did? Well, um, so one of the, the 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 okay, this gets into early medieval history, but one of the famous queens of Francia, she's an Anglo-Saxon, she's captured as a slave, Queen Baltil. Oh, amazing. And when when I forget which of the Merovingians marries her, she's queen, right? The kings kings could marry whoever they wanted. I mean, it's like this the the mistake Henry the Eighth made was he you know had previous wives, but but the. The sort of the you know the desire to marry into nobility, yes and no. But the kings, I mean, it's like that's what's interesting about social status. Like the the it's all a little accidental, right? Grace is accidental from a human perspective. We don't know why so and so is chosen. Oh, that's great! So it's way more random than than even yeah. I thought. All right, cool. <laughs> so it really is sex voting. It's really sex voting. It's just a... <laughs> oh, how cool is that yeah that's way more fun you don't know what's going to happen next just roll the dice who knows who ends up in there right that that would be that's a way that's a way more fun system to play with than this really oddly rigid uh cast system that we have now which is based on basically who has enough money to buy their yeah i want to say Sex voting, sex. Well, right but the, and but but there's also the you know, it's like we have this faux meritocracy, 
claim, which I participated oh, in, in yeah. academia, you know, of, of, of so, the scholars are much better off when we're courtiers than when we, we think we're in charge, right? It's like, we're, <laughs> we're, we're good as advisors, not so good as like the actual rulers, because the, the king, mm -hmm. by the sex voting, then he is king by the grace of God. He doesn't did, he did zero to deserve it, right? He, it's mm -hmm. like, you, you're born it, that's it, you do it. And so that, that, it's honest, though, isn't it, yeah. to say that everyone acknowledges that he did nothing to right. deserve it. He didn't. It's, yeah, he's just it's born. Nice. It. <laughs> <laughs> he's you know, it, and so, but what I like about this, so here's the you know they they said mass, which has forms that I recognize, but is you know Anglican instead, um, um, mm -hmm. and and what you know the magnificent thing that happened, of course, and I think you pointed this out in some of your your sandwich post sandwich press posts was live streamed to the entire world our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name mm, thy kingdom thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil through jesus christ our lord that's not what we say but amen <laughs> <laughs> you know, sorry, the king, that's what we the say. The kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. I mean, the, the Anglicans say, no, and, no. and they say sins and trespasses. Uh, it's like, you know, death. Well, anyway, the whole world heard the prayer, right? Talk about the internet, yeah. the moment of the internet. It's like, because this was being yeah. live streamed everywhere. Suddenly we have mass with the prayers. This was powerful. Yeah. This powerful yeah. sort it, of media it, it, accident of... It was a state occasion, but it was sacred. Yeah, they were live streaming the Alpha, though. But it was magnificent to watch it. I, I like, I, I as I was, you know, toasting my sandwiches throughout this coronation, just looking at your being... stream was great for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are they doing now? You know, I get really excited about it because it's like we don't have this. Um, I mean, I can't say we, because it's, uh, look, it's different. Like, WOGs have a very strong here in the Antipodes because we have this, uh, we have this connection to the old world, but we've got to hide it, you know, mm. because the primarily Anglo uh, demographic here have, uh, have, uh, you know, they've got no, uh, real re religious vivification of their culture so it's it, it was beautiful to see this you know live streamed because it's like all right he's being coronated but not just as a king he's about to become the head of the church of england so he's got that dual role right. so everyone starts watching it uh, and i'm watching it and i'm thinking this is probably one of the only moments that a lot of people here have heard that prayer said in public for for who knows years right and we're supposed to, every time Parliament sit in Australia, we're supposed to say that our father, it is the foundational prayer of the British system here. Mm. And so, you know, seeing that light, it was very, very beautiful. You know, the sort of moment of, um, unapologetic religiosity that you know we're not hiding this we don't have to hide it yeah this uh, this i, I enjoy says. this a lot right it's like that they it was yeah. a, it was a mass it was anglican but you know it was a mass yeah it had the prayers yeah. it had the all of the sacred music i i thought you know the the music that they chose i we need to do another stream with like somebody actually talks music properly it it was they they made beautiful selections and the and Anglican choirs are, of yeah. course I did I put a choir image in here oh and now here's William and his family um, you know the people were singing the choirs were singing it it mm. was a sacred cer a sacred I don't even like these these ceremony ritual it's like these are they feel pale and not what it was which was real mm. it was a moment of reality no theater mm. no irony no cardboard castles and stuff like that it just mm -hmm. it felt anchored and substantive a romance a romance 
a living romance and saying, so yes. Casey is saying here, the, I think William's pledge was the most beautiful part of the ceremony. It was, it was, it's like he and his family here in the, they're not actually in the choir, which was interesting. The seating was interesting. The choir was in the choir and the people, including William and company were not in the choir. They're a little bit further away. Um, but it was the, they're witnessing to his father's coronation Mm. that that affected me more than anything else other than the book which which i found interesting but it, it was that they were saying it's a marriage it was alive it was here his father is king now he will be king and his his son is in there mm -hmm. too right the little boy um that's a living uh nation yeah 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 it's alive it has children it has children oh my god now i'm gonna cry i mean it... all the earth doth worship thee which art the father mm. they they put they put the cameras in all these amazing places i don't know it's like i don't even think i was watching a particular i was like yahoo or something i'm not sure it was a like official live stream but they were able to show from this like the, this is from these they had cameras up in the 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 um, arches and such and you say that we were in this in a sacred space in a way that i think almost nobody ever is anymore even though it's all cameras which is a going to be one of our moments in in a second but again and again it's like we all the earth doth worship thee which art the father hmm. we were remembering that we're children pater nostro our yeah. father yeah it's it's the masculine ideal it's the father the hood of God, the kingship of God. So you have the, you have the beautiful image of the King Charles and then William and his son George. It's, it's that's patriarchal lineage. That's the promise of the monarchies is that there is going to be patriarchy and the yeah they're they're <laughs> it's family as a family ruling. It's not ruled by merit. There's something very beautiful in mm. that. Well, it's because it's because you know it's the accident of your birth that makes mm. you have to take on these responsibilities, and that is all well, of us, right? It's our accident, the accident yeah. of our birth into this creation that gives us responsibility. We don't merit it. Mm. Well, it's like what you said about the old world being built for people mm. and the new world being being built by machines for machines i mean monarchies are not machines they can't be there's no machinery there's a family maybe that's you know why why it's such a deep thing to see william looking at his father he's looking at his he's looking at his own future <laughs> that and, and, and... so and son what did he He's going to have to do one day. Well, and so now I now I have Charles surrounded by the the, the bishops, which for me this what this this one shot was like I've seen this in manuscripts, right? <laughs> These you know it's mm -hmm. like if we're going to represent a coronation in the medieval tradition, they show the king surrounded by the the, the priests. Um, but what you were talking about now, just that like, he's seen he's seen his father. He's also seen his own death. Yeah. I'm, I'm making yeah. myself cry now. Oh my gosh. I mean, mm -hmm. just as, I mean, when, when I, there was one shot of Charles when his mother's coffin was lowering down and it's just like, this is mine, right? That, that, that it's, it's our life, but it's also our mortality. I think the, mm -hmm. what we've been talking about corporations and such, they're dead things, right? They live forever beyond any human life and they pass on. And the, the this is, I mean, the the king is dead long live the king your death is in this moment as as charles is surrounded mm -hmm. by this these these priests he knows he's not going to yeah. be king forever yeah he can't yeah. be it's he's human it's inevitable i think that's what checks it that's what checks the the, the power of the crown Yes. That's the balance in the ceremony. 
that's the, that's why the that's why there is solemnity because he's about to receive the weight of both all of the power that the monarch is invested with but with that uh the shadow of death hanging over it at the same time yeah and see camilla didn't have the same expression that she Charles didn't had. no she didn't at all she she, she looked she looked a bit gleeful i mean not in a bad she way was, but just like she was not yeah, but this wasn't the moment that is you know burying her no her her children will not look at him because they're not her children so she she's not she's not joining in the death yeah she's sort of half there but she's not really climbing into the coffin with charles mm. it's a deep thing it's a very deep thing and I, i'm very happy that we haven't completely just from it it's probably the only thing keeping the australian people sane in the insanity that is this post-1776 american empire mm. that has washed us in nothing like we've, we've been completely you know it's like saturated in the magic kingdom absolutely saturated in the imagery of the magic kingdom and the only thing keeping us from falling over the cliff of insanity and becoming completely American is the fact that we do not want to abandon this part of our national identity because without it, we don't know who we are. We have to serve, we have to serve the British monarchy mm. as Australians, even though they got rid of us, which is why this is where my pride comes in too. This is a really, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't like being equivocated with Americans. I hate it. And it's because of this, because even though we had more reason than you guys mm. to become Republicans, because we really did, we didn't do it. We did the opposite. We were down here minding our own business and the empire said, we need extra soldiers for X war over there in some, you know, wasteland of the empire. And we said, okay, fine, we'll go, you know, over and over mm. and over again. It was just like, okay, yeah, we'll go. Why? I don't know. Because the king needs us. Well, the queen needs us. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, that's it, that thing. We go serve and then we come back and we go back to being little kangaroos ourselves because we we recognize that the the severity of what he represented, you know, we have the sacred, we've, we've got it, it's secure. So we can be ridiculous. We don't have to take ourselves too seriously because we know the monarchy are doing it for us. And uh, and then we switched and we started to serve America, who takes itself very seriously because it has nobody serious <laughs> running the country. Yes, we do and take it, ourselves crushingly seriously. So we have you do. we have we have yeah. a few we have a few comments that you know. To be fair, we actually none of these things are not new to us, right? So Buzz Sauber wants to remind us: his mother, the Queen, gave royal assent to abortion and end to sodomy laws in Canada. We know. Um, Buzz Sauber yeah. also says the new king with he's got ha uh, quote air scare quotes was friends with the worst pedo in history, Jimmy Savile. Yes, we know, which is yes. one of the reasons we were surprised to be so affected by the ceremony <laughs> because somehow it did not. It, I mean, so although Casey says Camilla did look gleeful, happy for her husband and herself, I think not a bad thing, just not deep, right? That she was still there mm -hmm. in her like personality and something has yeah. happened for Charles that he realizes he, like you were saying, he doesn't get to be Charles anymore. Whatever he is as Charles yeah, the third. And I, I, I've had this sense too, that he's kind of erased, right? That, that somehow yeah. Charles is now, I mean, Elizabeth was always familiar with yourself and you say there's Elizabeth of the Elizabethan age. And, and certainly those mm -hmm. of us who watch Fox understand the degree to which indeed she oversaw the collapse of a lot of things that we would value. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's, it, and, 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 you know, and I, you know, Milo is, is, is aware of these things too. So it was astonishing 
how powerful the ceremony was, which is what we're talking about, yeah. right? It's like, how can knowing all of the things we do? And the thing is, it's like, you want, you want a king that didn't have these kinds of things. So it's like, let's see, let's do Edward the third, Edward, let's see, Edward the second, who is deposed by <laughs> parliament and his, um, uh, probably gay lover, Gavs, uh, Piers Gaveston is, um, disemboweled, drawn and quartered. There's a picture in Froissart. Um, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, this is what's fascinating about monarchy as independent from the sins of the, the, the actual men who have been monarchs or, you know, Henry the eighth. Uh, so yeah. it's, it's like, how can we, how can it, it's almost incredible. How can we still have an ideal of the monarch when we know all of these things? But it's it's not like we escape yeah. by not having a monarch, which was also has also been our point. Mm. What do we do? I I, <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, like it's it's just um. I mean, you've got a you've got the first off. There is a perfect example of a hate muse, right? It's like oh, you know, blah 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 blah. We've got the hate muse now. All right, same thing. What what does that mean? probably that we're going to become like the thing that we're hating. Uh, but the, the culture has symbolic language to anchor itself in. This is like probably the best, you know, defense of it. It's like, um, all right, they're imperfect people, but the office they hold is powerful symbolic weight. So you can try and, I mean, become puritanical and then eliminate all of the offices because the people are polluting the symbols. Right. But then you haven't purged the symbols. You purged the culture of the symbols. You're kind of in the symbolic iconoclasm right. of your own culture because it wasn't perfectly done. But all you've done is just thrown everything away. And what could you possibly replace it with that's going to guarantee that better men are going to hold similar offices we like you've just said i mean we've had like quite a while to kind of haven't achieved it play around <laughs> right <laughs> it's like mm, i did a very, very good job with not not having the symbols we've just uh denied that we want the ideal we're getting a lot of chatter from the chat right now. Buzz Bear, we need to treat the world like a garden and pick some weeds. And again, Buzz Bear, there's no pleasure involved in picking weeds, just needs to be done for the garden to grow. Well, okay, so we started with our our, our image of cultivation and, and aristocratic gardening um, as a, mm. a, you know, art and exquisite. Um, this is, of course, why the United States has no king. <laughs> because... We went for, I mean, we were Puritans and they had to leave because nobody could stand them. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yay, New England. Uh, the Virginians left under different circumstances. The Pennsylvanians on another circumstances. The Scots-Irish, us, still want Braveheart. No, wait. Um, that, that, you know, it, the the sort of desire for perfection is its, is its own tyranny. And, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about that. It's like when you said with, you know, when they, the, when they execute, well, any of the Kings that they've killed, right. It's like you chop off Charles the first head and you get, Oh, guess what? Cromwell, the parliament, <laughs> <laughs> parliamentarian tyranny so bad that they restore the monarchy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It was like the parliament had its, you know, at first they had the civil war and all the, all the Americans run away and become Americans. Americans, um, <laughs> golly. And, then, and then, you know, you have the, the, you know, Cromwellian decade and then he dies and they're like, great, let's get a king again. Yep. So consider, Isn't that interesting? like they tried it once and brought him back. <laughs> and then, and then the United States, I mean, we get rid of George cause you can make this long list of complaints against him. I'm not sure we're happy with the present situation either. And, and this being then, I guess the, but I'm not going to, I got the garden metaphor. There is no perfection in a garden, but when you compare my dad's to the neighbor's, well, okay, right. But I think there's a, there's a spiral. There's a purity spiral that we're going to mm. have to deal with here. And what, what you're saying kilts is interestingly, 
killing the man who holds the office and at the same time destroying the office. Well, in France, they got the terror and then Napoleon. Yes. And then, you know, yes. uh, the, the entire collapse of Europe, <laughs> which we're still dealing with. What, I mean, I this is uh, for, you know, humanity, one of our mysteries of government. Mm. We need to carry on with ceremony because this was my favorite image of the whole. Well, actually, several favorites. This is another of my favorites. It's, it's the church from the crossing. Right. And so you can see mm. the abbey built as a giant cross filled with people. And that this is the great mystery that we are dealing with as a um the people involved right it's it's the all of this we can say it's all charles and it's all about charles and those bishops and there but in fact it's about the witness of the world and thanks to all these cameras that we could see all mm -hmm. of it the truly moving part which i had not expected is when they went outside and they met were met with the horses the guards the mm -hmm. people the city, the streets filled with yeah. human beings yeah. and horses, but human beings. Yeah. 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 The people, the people. Uh, and it's people that were not there to buy anything. Isn't that really amazing? They weren't there to, to buy anything. They, and they, they couldn't even get in the Abbey. They hadn't gotten one of those fancy invitations yeah. that we showed at the, the invitation we showed at the beginning with the, the devices and the green man and the space for the name, the people in the street didn't get any of that. And yet here they, so here the, yeah. the guards on their horse, I don't, I'm not enough of a Anglophile in these terms to know all of these, like the, the men in the fuzzy hats are what the palace guards, right? I don't know. The <laughs> Neither of us know, right? They're, they're, they're English. They're, they're, English. they're, English. they're, they're, the, they're the tall ones. I mean, I, I think I left this out of our stack too. There's, there was, there, the, now the cameras are outside and it's very interesting to figure out where they put all the cameras to get all these shots in the street. But there's, there's one mm -hmm. of the, it's not the beef eaters. Those are the ones in the tower. And now I don't remember what these, the, the bear, the bear hat guys, right? The, the ones that have the bear hats. Yes. Um, they're so tall that this guy standing next to them, he looked, he's like, why is he so short? Because <laughs> <laughs> the palace guards are all these giants, right? And then they have these giant hats, right? So they're there to welcome the, the um, procession. And here they are leading it with their gold hats and their plumes and the and the coach is all mm -hmm. gold, right? And of course, there's Twitter stuff out there saying, you know, all that gold and they couldn't fix the streets. And it's like, well, you know, we're not on the gold standard, so it doesn't really make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> this is just shiny metal now. It doesn't mean anything. Yep. You can't, you know, it's like... Guess what? So this this did also petro petro dollars. Yeah, these are uh, our pet, your you're petro dollars at work. Those are over in Harrods. Yeah, let's see Harrods. Well, I was gonna say it's like it, <laughs> they you're, bought you're not gonna, Street. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna cover a coach in petroleum just to sh to, to show what the currency's backed by. <laughs> <laughs> like, so yeah. there's this astonishing gold coach. Um, but but indeed the, the 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 procession they planned and and they allowed the people into the streets you know so they've got all the army the guards and the police and mm. and everybody in the coach pulled by the horses and stuff but it was uh, you know I, I guess we've seen protests what three years ago with the the, the street protests and all of that it was there's so there was such an absence of 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 machines. It was really stunning. It's like yes. we have a coach pulled by horses, and then of course there was some there were some you know embarrassing and pathetic images of um, the Americans in cars, the diplomatic cars, oh, and you realize like, oh, so yeah. what what yeah. is it like not to be? It's like, now I think about that now whenever I'm in the car and I'm it's like you're not surrounded by people anymore. You're surrounded by hybrids, right? Were these hybrids mm -hmm. in cars? Yeah, robots. Robots. The yeah, it's, it's sur surrounded by, like normal people being surrounded by robots. Of the people are robots. They're surrounded by robots too. I I I. They're not in horses. 
uh, horse-drawn carriages. I mean, the, the U.S. president isn't getting <laughs> he isn't getting transported around the country in a horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> Insecure people would say, "Oh, it's you know, you need more security. Right. Why do you need so much security? Why do your people hate you so much that you need that level of security?" <laughs> you know, so people love Charles. Yeah, no, because he's He's out with horse and carriage. Right, right. <laughs> he can relax enough to go in a horse-drawn carriage. I, I think I, le I reached, so I did not know there was a limit. Just a sec. Oh, with the images? Yeah, I think I just fixed it. Okay. Uh, no, I'm back to the invitation somehow. Just a sec. Hmm. There. Okay. I fixed it. Our, our stack was too full tonight. Okay. So now we got, so then, and then this, this is what I think, I think Milo did some, some nice posts on this too. It's like the, not only are they filled with people, but they're filled with people marching in unison, which mm. was surprisingly effective, affective, effective. It was this feeling of human harmony it was i mean it was musical in a sense so there was no music there I, like i said there's no there was no like soundtrack or anything like that it's like they did have sounds of the horses in the streets and the and the marching of the men's feet in these formations and suddenly we realized i realized what we had lost our humanity mm -hmm. a king is a king of human beings yep and he's fallible. He's friends with bad people. He, his mom may not have been, you know, I, we don't, we don't ever have in the sense she wasn't actually virtuous herself, but, um, you know, all for all the fallibility of these individuals in these offices, mm. which they hold till they die. Therefore, you know, they're, they're mortal in a way that simply your own prestige isn't right you want to be famous forever right it's like well you know elizabeth yes. is famous forever but she died um and that and and the the people that came out to recognize this moment and trained to be able to march that way it was quite it was quite effective yeah. i didn't put any videos in tonight but it it you know here showing the men in the hats and these perfect ranks but no machines right so it, yes. you know even though these are trained as soldiers and and things like that the the moment was not one of showing our our ab military strength. ability to kill you i mm. mean the, and the thing is there are some moments where okay here they are in their the carriage and the gold um and th this is the 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 formation rank the formation marching of the soldiers now this this you know it's early modern Gustavus Adolphus designs the Swedish army to do this. They figure out how to all do it in the Thirty Years' War and train and drill and stuff like that. But the, the you know, there's the feeling of the precision. This is the empire. This is the empire, which is the ability to march these guys down the street in perfect formation. So much so mm -hmm. that it's still the aesthetic that everybody uses to show off nation. Mm. <laughs> the 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 marching needs a metronome yes the marching needs a metronome so if it's not the monarchy it's a symbolic metronome what do you have to keep your nation marching in formation or uh, uh, harmonizing in a way that can it can be uh choreographed in that way i mean we're that that's our culture war crisis that's our cultural crisis now it, we're, we're completely disharmonized and we have right. no idea how to fall into formation because we don't want we don't know what the form is there's no there's no prototype there's no ideal right there's no so ideal people, there's nothing there's nothing and then Buzz, in, Buzz Saber is apologizing for for being so enthusiastic, but wanting moral authority, being God, yes. But that's the thing that we have the the, yes. the human institutions we have. I mean, even the priests. I mean, that that's the you know the priests are God authorities in this institutional moment, and yet there's something else. I mean, the, 
whoever designed this this ceremony got it right mm-hmm. of the solemnity and the sacrality of the 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 anointing and the investment in the mass and then the necessity of the people in harmony and in um i mean this this sort of twinning of the the verbal and the mathematical that we've talked about a lot the trivium the quadrivium the mm-hmm. arts of being human are in in on display here in a way that i mean it's like the the city is usually chaotic and we've seen all we've all seen all the you know it looks like chicago sometimes um the degree to which you know the the, the harmony has been lost yeah this yes. is the moment this is the same we can we can be you know not just peacefully but we can be vigorously alive in this community mm. as human beings um the people in their umbrellas just were between flags and like a mass right they didn't necessarily march but they were all quite calm mm-hmm. and happy <laughs> you could see them like waving at the cameras and dressed up and and it was raining because it's england um and again it was this feeling of you know i my most of my medieval stories are oh what you know of the of the peasants revolt in 1381 when they go out you know to challenge richard the sec the richard the first who is richard the second richard the second who is you know like 17 at the time and you know has has the the gumption just to ride his horse into the middle of the crowd who's just murdered the archbishop of canterbury yeah they don't all get out right um and and (laughs) and and this 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 crowd was peaceful right and and happy Mm. to be there celebrating this ceremony which involved them too right it was like it was you Mm. couldn't do it like 2020 inauguration with just flags there Right, you needed the human beings to acknowledge the king. Yes, yes. You couldn't do it with special effects. You couldn't do it with a green screen. No green screen. It had to be in the flesh. It had to be an incarnational experience. Right. Yeah, yeah. And 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 majesty without special effects. You know, there was no there was no laugh track behind it. There was no explosion sounds. There was no like space lasers <laughs> i mean yeah the jets flew overhead and they had some oh like, we haven't got to that yet whatever but not the jets yet oh okay sorry right dude. now we just but, had the people um, in the street now here we're showing the police in the street because they can do formation too <laughs> which which is interesting because they're of course the city military right the police are the military of the city uh so they were there right and and it, it there were there were several moments okay now we have the people on the balcony right in the full balcony well the, they're, the they're not they're not it's not a political right. rally like there was no there's no politics there zero right. politics zero politics none it's just it, like uh it if they're there to honor a sovereign it's a completely different experience than people that are going with badges saying you know vote for this party or whatever it, it nothing not they were not there to vote <laughs> That, right, God um, gave the vote on this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Previously exactly. Right. He did. And um so the people over there Yeah, it was uh I, I like I'm not sure what else I can say about it really. It was just it was wonderful to see crowds of people that were together for nothing other than a celebration. They weren't getting anything out of it. This is true. They were—they weren't there to protest or demand or. Nope. They were there to cheer. Yeah, it was a party. Sort, sort of. of. Not really. A, so a, right a now, I'm sure so, so the... a different kind of party, a different, a different kind of. Yeah. yeah. So the family came uh, out. The, 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 the crowd marches down the street. And, and say, you know, they probably the, most of them saw it in the same way we did on their phones or something, right? Um, cause they mm. weren't in the Abbey and, and then the, the family came back out onto the balcony and the crowd is all there. So you could say, we've done this, we've done this meditation before of the bal you know, the people on the balcony look like they're the important ones, but, yes. um, they're, they're all, I, this is not quite that image that I know, you know, is coming. This is not, it's not, they're only important cause there are other people looking at them. Mm. So there yeah. is this, you know, the, the people and the King 
are a necessary system. Um, yes, it's it's their attention that's uh, the real power. The people's attention, yep. It's the people's attention that's the power. It's not the monarch. So there's one moment, one moment in this whole thing where it got a little ominous for me, and that's they're on the balcony, and then everybody looks expectant, right? And then I have this, here's my, here, oh, and here's the kids, right? The princess and princess, the prince and princess. They, they you know, their future, right? Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're all standing there in the balcony, and then the helicopters came. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Which, even if you still and embarrassed didn't know the Elvish, if you've been reading too much Tolkien, of course, that's the the eagles are coming, right? It's like mm -hmm. the, the it, it's it's completely unsurprising that you know air power is what lifts mm -hmm. the hobbits, you know, Sam and Frodo off from the from the blasted you know volcano after they've they've done their their um mission that the the eagles come in and lift them out just like helicopters although i don't think they have helicopters in world war ii do they guys you gotta help me um, but 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 the helicopters for us are of course this is my father served in in thailand during the vietnam conflict as a surgeon and he said you know mm -hmm. those helicopters come in those are the bodies that they're bringing for you to operate on everybody's seen mash they mm -hmm. know what that is that was a lot less funny my dad said when they were watching it on base when the helicopters mm. would keep coming in. And, and so, I mean, is it very interesting therefore that Harry was a helicopter pilot because yeah. these are the most terrifying uh, machines you could have brought in right at this moment. And it, it's like, it killed the whole thing for me. I was like, I was all happy with the horses mm -hmm. and the gold and the people and the pageantry. And then the machines came and I was reminded who we are. The mechanic dragons. Yep. The dragons came. Mechanical the dragons. Mechanical dragons came. Mm. And Harry used to fly one of these, so maybe it's better off. He's better off that he's not. He's <laughs> okay. Sorry, I just had jokes about his wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that that and then after the the mechanical dragons came in, the um, power of the empire demonstrated in the smoke of the jets. And then, mm -hmm. and then it was rather sinister for me at this point, because this is of course how from the first world war, both the English and the United States, the, the, the ever English, those of us who are not English in name anymore, but English in fact, in our language, in our political institutions mm -hmm. and in our command of the air. So I mean I this this reminded me of when um Trump gave his his 4th of July speech on 2020 at Mount Rushmore and they had a, the the Air Force. My dad was mm. in the Air Force too although he couldn't fly cuz his eyes weren't good enough. Um he learned to fly later in life and did little Cessnas and stuff. The 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 air power, right? It's like there's no wonder we dream of dragons and then make them and then here's this set of nine dragons trailing the red, white and blue yeah that that changed it for me that was a suddenly moment it's like no we're still in the dragon so you guys are worried you guys are worrying about the human sins that the the family has had this is the power that we're really trapped by mm. yeah the airwaves yep the military which isn't uh I, I don't know how to describe it the, the the militarism and then what that actually is yeah i'm out of wine now get to the sober i'm, I'm too sober for this part oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> the, the scottish uh, well my rufino my you know, orvieto this... classico hey, i mean this is the comp the, the is manuscript the comp came from italy and now look what come you know the the the, 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 the the power of the dragons there was a so there was a comet over england when um famously before the battle of hastings and uh 
and there were, there were dragons when the Vikings came and sacked Lindisfarne. These 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 dragons are are bad news. Hmm. They consume. They consume. They're what killed Beowulf. Hmm. In his greed. Well, actually, so Beowulf had to go fight the dragon because it was, it, having been stolen from, it was eating the, it was fire, you know, breathing fire over all the, the towns and Beowulf had to go protect his people. But it's, you know, it, he also wanted to see the gold. Did we mention we're having a Kickstarter and we want yours? Um, <laughs> we want the gold. <laughs> Take Petra dollars as well. Yeah, we well, <laughs> I want to make that jewel that we have in gold, right? So I need some rubies too. Um, yeah, so I, it, it, the, the, I think we made this point, right? And then, and then we look back to here's the balcony and then what you see, in fact, what the scene was, which was the people down below cheering for the people on the balcony and those people on the balcony don't really get to leave that balcony unless they are hairy. Hmm. So you guys being nasty in the chat about how you know, <laughs> princess Charlotte looked beautiful. She did. She was, she was sweetie loading. No more the gravel copters. Well, yes. Um, so to be fair, the protesters were arrested and removed from public spaces. This is true, right? There are there are anti are they anti Windsorians or anti monarchists? Um, oh, they're and they're, they're anti monarchists. They're the yeah. full blown Republicans, right? Or socialists yeah. or was whatever it is that they want. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 astonishing that the the people were able to you know accomplish this this ritual with the the you know the solemnity and simplicity that they actually were <laughs> given all the the currents mm -hmm. that we are you know striving against constantly in the, in the moment yeah kind of miraculous isn't it <laughs> um i don't know we have the look our connection to great bit great britain is because of those gravel copters those helicopters mm. We, we we exist as military service for the for the empire australians that right. is not all of us, not all of us but you know the australians are essentially a, an incorporated military training sort of culture where uh you know the highest ideal for the australian is to serve and uh and fly dragons right essentially that's what we are uh, as a people. Without it, I'm not sure. What do we... I don't know what else there is really to kind of... There, There's no affinity at all with anything uh, in the cathedral because we don't... I mean, the, the modernity culture here uh, has led to full-blown... Uh, um, right. Uh, rejection of traditional family structure. Nobody believes in patriarchy. I mean, obviously, uh, Australia is probably one of the most feministic countries in the West because we lost two generations of men to the wars flying the gravel copters, which has embedded a matriarchy in the whole continent. So Australia is a matriarchy, right? Completely. Um, and then we're sort of run by people which are as Republican as they can get away with. So it's just a very, yeah, it's a, a very odd moment to watch the ritual of the coronation and see that the reason for our, this is the reason for our existence as a country mm -hmm. and what our role is in it is to serve as uh, it's a, those machines that invaded the pageantry. Yep. That is our role, which is quite sad. <laughs> it was, I mean, it, it was, it was, it was, I, it's like, I'd been surfing along and enjoying the, the, the marching and the, and, and the sound of the feet, right? It's like all the gravel, it's marching on gravel. And there was, again, there was a nice moment mm -hmm. when the, um, the guards, 
take their hats off. And then put, oh yeah, and, and, you know, hats off, and it's like, and I'm thinking about you know Terry Pratchett is always you know, always about hats, right? Terry Pratchett, very very great satirist, great 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 British satirist. Um, and you know, it's like you know the the hat makes it right. The witch needs her hat. The mm -hmm. king is a guy in a fancy hat. They took their hats off to the king, which was like okay, you know, this is the hat. The hat symbolism was we have we have to do a we'll have we're gonna have to do a hat stream, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which, which of course, so sure. yeah, the hats of all shapes and sizes. Hats, the hat, the hat streams. Yeah. But the stream part is, of course, the thing that I indeed found most interesting. I've remarked several times on the camera angles that I was noticing and how mm. you can be given the illusion of soaring like dragons in the abbey or over the people or over the streets and stuff. Where were the cameras? And the sort of fascinating thing is you realize at least in the, in the part around Buckingham palace, they're right in the middle right? mm. <laughs> that the actual, believe it or not, center of this entire ceremony. Well, if I, if I put it like this, it's you. Right. It's it's those of us who are watching on all of these streams, because yeah. if you see the you see the, the what, what happened to the fountain, they put the media in the fountain right under the great golden winged statue. And I, it took me a while to realize what I was seeing, because like these were, the, you know, they're sort of um, ranked seating or something like that. I've, I've started note. I mean, to, one being on camera made me start noticing things about what you need to do to be able to do it and two started noticing the way of course cameramen are always invisible now we don't see them we don't we we pretend mm. they're not there they're the the great they're the the i mean i don't know if there's god's eye right because they're not they're they're the ones who you pretend aren't there while they're in mm. the middle of your wedding taking the photos while they're i saw i was at fatima in November and the thing that riveted me most during mass was the guys live streaming it from these little balconies. Yeah. <laughs> and here we have, no wonder you were able to watch this ceremony because it's live stream, because these guys with the cameras are actually at the center of it all. Mm. Now, where are we? Whose attention's on who? Oh yeah. <laughs> <sighs> that dragon that we keep telling you we're doing this Kickstarter mm. about of the attention, yes. the internet, this absorption. And I mean, one of the things we're meditating on a lot in the, in the poem is the mirroring effects, right? How the dragon watches itself, watching itself. And, mm. and, you know, always ceremony is always about the audience because you are performing a, a you know, it's like the King there's dissertations, for decades on the way in which monarchs perform their sovereignty, right? I've, I've, I've read numerous versions of this particular argument. It's like, how do the kings in the Middle Ages perform their, their power? Well, they need an audience who recognizes mm. it and they, they need an audience mm. watching it. So we, all of us watching this live stream and the cameras that were there in the middle of it, we're part of the power of the moment, obviously, because it's like we're there. And, and the thing is, we were there, we weren't there because the cameras were there in the middle mm -hmm. with a much more privileged position than absolutely anybody else had. There was one right above the altar. Did you notice that? I was able to show you the vision from the altar. It's like Christ's view down the, down the nave. Mm -hmm. It's, the, you know, the, from the top of the nave, seeing the cross, which no human being, except for the guys who built it back in the Middle Ages, would have as a normal view. We have, you know, presumably the helicopter pilots, like the, all of these viewpoints and angles and such that we are made mm -hmm. to believe are invisible are always the one that is actually the one that is the the power. I mean, it's not Lacanian, if we're gonna say I don't do Lacan, but that, that sense of human power arises from our attention to each other. And obviously also, mm -hmm it's the power we we give power to that which we worship and that which we attend to and that which we watch yes by the grace of god oh. 
Hope that's made everyone thoughtful. <laughs> There's <laughs> more love bear. I'm a gravy love, love it. I'm glad, but I'm glad that we're, we're we're pointing things out that are hopefully now obvious and unsee it. You know, you can't unsee it, but it's interesting how we don't see it. And that's what I was recognizing. I was in this moment, not just of the oldest book in England being carried into the Abbey, but the novelty of watching this in 2023 mm -hmm. through all of these cameras, through the internet, through the world in its attention, and then understanding, as I saw this boy in the live stream, indeed what Kilt said at the beginning, that we need kings and we don't understand why anymore because we've lost our sense of being human. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm conscious of it. I say I've we in the in the, the preacherly sense. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I think the I, royal I sense. The royal. No, no. I, do I get to use the royal we or just the yes? We, do, the it, do, 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 do it. Do it. Which we is the monarchy right. stream. <laughs> I think but I'm what I loved when I saw this, it. this boy has this great hat, right? It's like, you know, soft crown kind of thing. And it's, mm. if there is a king, there is royalty. There is our royalty. There is our dignity. Not, you know, it's like not serfs of the king, yes, but yeah. the, the grubbiness that we have of our public life now is because there's literally nobody to wear that crown to lift us all out of the dirt. There's no one to serve. There's no one to, yes. There's no one to serve. And therefore, it's to like, be dignified, I should have put this in, by your service, as Sam is dignified by his service to Frodo, that that we are yes. all so horribly and grubbly Republican and Democrat, whatever we are, that we don't have, it's like, I see it when I see the image of this boy who is, perfectly happy wearing that cool hat and he's just as elevated as, as the prince on the on the balcony i mean it's the prince and the pauper kind of feeling of this mirroring without a king yeah. to look at and this this of course is icon iconographically why art matters so much if we destroy all the icons we destroy our recognition of ourselves as made in the image and likeness yep Yeah, everything is an... everything becomes an iconoclast. And you get to be iconoclastic of everything and you get to sit there and say that all of the nastiness that we see, I mean, it's not just because we don't monarch, right? But it's it is because of the iconoclasm of modernity that it destroys all beauty, it destroys all sanctity to be equal. I mean, this is to go back to our, our beginning that Tocqueville recognized this and he's famous for all these statements about tyranny and, and, and equality and so forth, but he's saying it, it's an, it's a, it's a consequence of the way the United States defined equality. He saw it all coming guys. If you're frustrated with the degree to which we have no feeling of dignity in our culture anymore, meditate on, on this, the, the, you know, the importance of, the king who serves, which they did put into the language of the coronation. I think that was Welby's doing, but yeah, they did. But it was, it was, you know, it was like, okay, maybe we have a way back out. Pray for Charles. He must serve. He must stop being the the power broker that he was and be the servant that he now is. Yeah. Yeah. Well. We have a really interesting choice now. Like I had the images uh, as you were explaining the the Tocqueville sort of vision of things and the thinking really now in the West we have the choice between having a king or having drag queens. Right. We want that central iconic authority with the the uh, the elevated artistic you know presence to be there to put our attention on we've just replaced it with this 
hideous imposter cults. The, you know? cl the clown kings. <laughs> the, we've got clown kings. Yeah, instead. exactly. Yep. Yep. We need real ones. God save King Charles. <laughs> God save King Charles. So did we tell you we're having a Kickstarter? <laughs> and and the, and the thing is, well, the, those of us, I, so I've, we've got some people here who I think maybe have not heard us live before. So I'm, thank you all for your, for your your listening. And I'm, I'm happy that Lodi No More, he says, I missed the first 40, but glad I stayed. Good one, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that one of the things we've been doing on the streams all all year is trying to give a, the, the like depth of the backstory that we hope we're putting in our Draco poem and our dragon poem mm -hmm. um that the the culture has lost this something significant and we're trying to figure out where it is i mean one of the quests that our characters have is like where did it go um mm. and the the sort of endless unpacking that we've been doing in these different registers we think we found out so so we have this kickstarter <laughs> which will let now load alchemical storytelling for the electric mosaic kickstarter <laughs> right and um the 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 feeling we're getting is so it's always we're in this story we we recognize we enter the myth mm -hmm. drink the spice recognize our participation in this mythology that has been swirling around us for centuries, right? We've in our conversations, mm -hmm. we've taken it back to, I mean, it's Elizabethan very much so, which is why our primary sort of arc of the story starts with the Fairy Queen, which we've talked about now. It's like, it's actually Star Wars, guys. We can explain that in more depth yes. uh, in another stream. <laughs> um, but that we're in, we are in this story, we're in the myth, and we need to recognize the degree of of glamour that the dragon of all of these things have, has captured us in and you know i looking at charles in the in in through these days it, it was like he's he's looking straight at that dragon and it's not easy to see mm. because i i you know one hopes that he may be seeing some of the horror of what he's participated in and in, in and now wrecking it's like he's been anointed and now it's like really present to him what kind mm -hmm. of responsibility he's taken on and we pray for william that he's able to bear it well in his own life charles didn't have an easy time as prince <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> so let's pray william and his family continue in their amity um and yes. that i you know i did i i do I want something that that family has? Well, I've got one, and I think he fell asleep under my chair. Yes, he's there. Mm. I've got the corgi. What else do you need? <laughs> Cute. Your little dragon. My little dragon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Well, okay. So we've. I, I will do a roll call of bears. We've got Rebear still, Mortloff bear, Lodi no more. Uh. And Casey, I think, is still still with us, and 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 some others, but they're not they're not talking to us. So that's our meditation on the coronation for now. Kickstarter on the twenty second of May, Monday. Give us your gold, because <laughs> because no. So please, d d d if you're watching now, please go register or click or whatever, so that you get the launch. Because we have some really great. Um, uh, reward tiers and some there some of them are limited so you really you really you know, want to make sure you get the option there and um, we are inviting you to share with us the journey that we've been on in learning what kind of mythology we actually are living in and it's got dragons mm -hmm. yes <laughs> <laughs> and it we does. just saw it played out in gorgeous you know fashion in in, in that coronation Okay, we we don't want to leave, do we? We want to stick around in this in this moment. We're gonna go now, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you for. <laughs> yeah, we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us. Give us your gold. No, wait. <laughs> Good night.